Good day or evening everyone, my name is Wandi Lemtembu and I'm back again with another YouTube video Only this time, and I feel like that's my favourite entry line, only this time I'm back to discuss the Miss South Africa top 10 reveal for the class of 2022 You guys, we finally have our finalists and I could not be any more excited to talk about every single one of them and yeah, I'll just share my thoughts about the reveal and my thoughts about the girls themselves in general if you are a new subscriber, welcome to the channel, welcome to our home space, welcome home I really do wish that you enjoy your time here and we get to stay and we get to in engage and discuss in a lot of pageantry topics that are inclusive of South Africa and everywhere else in the globe. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back again. I'm still happy that you're here enjoying uh, the channel's content and the channel's overall growth. But not to stall too much, um, yeah, let's get into this video. Let's talk about these girls. Let me tell you about my thoughts about everything, you guys. I am so impressed. Okay, you guys. So in my initial prediction for my Miss South Africa top 10, I had Anna Zaid Uma, Ayanda Tabete, Bethany Demons, Bianca Pesedenhout, Gela Boja Ngashe, um, Luve Meya, Pearl Nchehi, um, Davi Nogiri, Tamsin Jack, and last but not least, um, Tulani Ndiojana and in my bubbling ups of five or six rather I had Lizanne Lazarus, Kuma Matsuleka, Poentle Plaitki, Lebohang Matlangu, Luyanda Zuma and Ntabi Singh, I'm forgetting her surname excuse me but Ntabi Singh um, and yeah like you guys I am super stoked about how my initial prediction for my top 10 went i got seven out of ten girls correct and yeah let me just give you the top 10 that miss south africa announced during um the live interview or the live reveal of the show so in you know chronological order in terms of their names they announced um anna zaid umar ayanda tabete itumeling Parache, uh, Gelebo Hankashe, Lebo Hang Mahlangu, Luve, Mea, Pearl, and Chehi, Davi, Nakiri, Tamsin, Jack, and Leanda Zuma. Um, from those girls, um, who made it as per Miss South Africa standards and the ones that I correctly predicted, they were, um, Anrazid Uma, Ayanda Tabete. Uh, so that's three. Um, Luve Maya four. Uh, Pearl and Chehi five. Um, Davi Nokiri six. Tamsin Jack seven. I was so excited about that because, yeah, I, I, I really was so doubtful when I was making my top 10 prediction. But getting 70% or so 7 out of 10 isn't bad at all. Like, it isn't bad at all. Um, yeah, I'm super impressed and super stoked by my own skills of observation and, al and analysis. And I hope to grow them stronger and stronger. So they obviously, like, resonate with other countries as well. But, yeah, like, let me get into my initial thoughts and perspectives and just, yeah, of, of everyone. Okay. So, for me, the pleasant surprise in this entire cohort or group that made it into top 10 was Itumiling Parache. I know, like, I didn't have her in my, you know, forethoughts or even in my honorables amongst my bubbling ups. And so, that just tells us that I heavily slept on Itumiling Parache. But, you know, upon digging of her, because I was going to do an, an individual analysis of her, I found that she is an LLB student um, at Vets University. She describes herself as being strong-willed and an intentional young woman who has, you know, a vision to move South Africa forward. And yeah, she is inspired by the strides 
that women take up every single day to continue. And yeah, um, in the live reveal, we also just found out that she's a super funny individual. So she obviously is a person with a lot of character and substance. So within the top 10 journey, I feel like I am more involved and vested into the girls because of the, you know, there's a lower or lesser concentration and my attention span can be divided i feel evenly for all of them so i am looking at the girls intensively for a possible top five top three prediction maybe even predicting miss south africa herself i don't know the pressure's on um but yeah what a pleasant surprise i don't think anyone truly saw her coming so yeah that's always good when girls you know enter the chat and we're all just like wow welcome to the party i'm super proud of her um and then i just have this category like expected unexpected like cuts so a lot of people like were evenly divided about bianca most people outright said that she wouldn't be making top 10 this this time around i was one of those people who clearly thought she would be making top 10 only because of the experience that she leveraged from the year before her placing in top five top five is kind of like a really big deal in South africa it's kind of like the golden circle of her pageantry or of anyone as like pageantry korea to me that's just a virtue signal that like she is one of was well is one of the girls that in that time the organization seriously was considered to giving a crown so it's only natural thought and a progression of thoughts that one would assume that yeah, with that past experience with placing as high as she did and returning um, the year concurrently following her year of high placement, placing in top 30 that she would find herself in top 10. Um, I, I did like the feedback that the judges gave of her. They're very fair um, that, yeah, like she timed herself wrong, essentially. And yeah, even though like her interview was fine, uh, she had no evolution to it. Um, and I think that couldn't be truer. I think Bianca has a lot to grow on and she has a lot to just personally reflect on and how she then should proceed with her journey at Miss South Africa. Um, yeah, it's not a lack of depth that is stopping Bianca, but it's just a lack of, I guess, having that ability to, you know, wow the judges panel um, and just show and exhibit growth in ways that are profound um um yeah not in the sense of depth per se in terms of like speaking but like depth in a way that just shows that you're more grown more mature more self-assured um more intentional and you know you you know what you want from this platform and how you're gonna serve it um another top 30 uh sort of like cuts that i had sort of like predicted for my top 10 who didn't make it is bethany de Mont. I know, I know, I know. I spoke so highly of her in my initial analysis video of her. Um, I still think that as an individual, she really was or is un undeniable, especially when she has to speak, uh, when she has to speak about her various platforms and how she even articulates herself to the judges. So, yeah, when I heard or saw or was watching that she obviously didn't make the top 10, I was kind of like... Yeah, I had a I had a moment to myself where it's just like, what is going on here? Did they really just say that to her? But I guess, yeah, like a lot of a lot of things happen during like pageant week itself, and a lot goes on in the judging like panel room or interview room, and we only saw clips of her um of her of her judging activities, but not the full show. Um, the judges clearly saw something else in other girls. And that resulted and culminated in our current top 10, which is very phenomenal. It is very strong. All of those girls, when I think about them, they just, they're crackers, they're firecrackers. I don't know how to explain that any better, but yeah, they're girls who are on fire, basically. Um, yeah, even my previous prediction, it was 18 out of 30. Very proud of that. Um... Yeah, and two girls from my bubbling app made it to um, the top 10. And those girls are uh, Leander Zuma and Lebo Lebo Hang Mahlangu, sorry. 
um yeah like they obviously did enough to impress the judges and i think it's just a matter of confidence and just being self-assured that really got them to that point so yeah i am just super ecstatic about all of these girls because they have an abundance of potential to actually just show out you know what i mean for finals um at sun arena i hope i will be going i hope i hope um and do the most for our country i think our country is one that everyone internationally should be looking at because all of these top 30 girls are really incredible and they're operating from an incredible inherent source of uh, of worth um i am just super impressed by all of them because they're all so well spoken and they all have unique talents that they can can and could offer the platform and yeah i i i am just keeping my eyes peeled on every single one of them um i'm i am going to be committing myself to doing an individual analysis of each girl within the coming weeks up until pageant week um and yeah just hopefully offer you guys my predictions that you know results further top five top three you know those type of vibes um and yeah i also just look forward to actually giving an analysis to miss supranational which lalela Mswane, the current miss south africa will be competing in and yeah i have some of my early favorites there but i need to do a lot of intensive research about that so i can offer you guys my opinions as i think fair as they are or good as they are but yeah overall i am just so happy with my stats of getting again seven out of ten girls into the miss south africa top 10 not even getting them but like predicting them correctly um i feel like i'm sort of like close with the miss SA like formulae so i i am chuffed about it you guys and yeah i hope you all have enjoyed my content thus far i hope you all are engaged um yeah if anyone is new and is watching please do subscribe press the like button and yeah you guys i really have nothing more to say but yeah, bon voyage, let me go sleep, let me prepare for the week, you know, I'm really ec ecstatic, just go hype up the top 10 girls, show them some love, but from me, you'll see me next time in another video when I'm back again to analyze our top 10 or any other international events for that matter, see you soon, bye!